In this video, we are going to take a look at quite possibly the smallest and most affordable lens I have ever used in the Sony E-mount system, and that is the TT Artisan 25mm f2 lens for APS-C. Now, for full disclosure, TT Artisan sent me this lens to do a review on. No money exchanged hands, they do not get any input into this video, nor do they get to see before I post it. However, I do get to keep the lens as an FYI. Now, this is a native Sony E-mount lens, and yes, you can get this for some other camera systems and lens mounts as well. That said, because it is a lens designed for APS-C bodies, this 25mm focal length actually works out to be around a 375 millimeter field of view, given the 1.5 times crop factor you're going to find in Sony APS-C cameras. And because this lens is designed for APS-C, as someone that owns full frame bodies like the a7 IV and a7 R5, which you'll see footage from later, this means I want to use it with a camera that can support APS-C crop mode when shooting, say, in 4K, versus cameras like my a7S III that cannot. Though, of course, for those of you that want to see what this looks like on a full frame body without crop mode, now you've seen it. Now this lens is extremely small and compact as you can see. Towards the front of the lens you have a manual aperture control ring which, whether you can tell or not, is clickable. Also you have a manual focus ring because yes this is a manual focus lens so you might have an easier time using this and manually focusing say than you would with an autofocus lens using focus by wire and of course if it is of help to you you have different focus markings and distances noted here along the lens as well. Now the lens has a pretty standard rear cap as you would see in most of Sony's E-mount lenses and a metal front cap in this case so sort of a very small and compact design there as well. Placing it on a Sony E-mount camera is pretty much like you would do with any other Sony E-mount lens. You'll see that you you have the red dot which you can align with the white dot on Sony's cameras and once you do that it will click into place. Then you can remove the metal front cap and at that point you are good to go. Now for some other quick specs about the lens, yes this goes to an f2 aperture that goes as close to f16. You have a 43 millimeter front filter thread that this lens uses, so overall fairly small. The lens also uses seven aperture blades for those who are curious. This lens has a very close minimum focusing distance of 9.8 inches or roughly 0.25 meters. So you can definitely get close on your subject if you want to get those types of shots. And overall, it comes with a set of manuals and a nice little box, as you can see right here. All right, so let's talk about what it's like to actually shoot with this lens. So as you can see, when on a camera body like the a7 IV or really almost any Sony mirrorless body, you're going to have a very small and compact setup. And that is perhaps a pro and con. Now, if you're someone that values small and light setups, I would say this lens is the cream of the crop for being able to do this, at least as far as manual focus, wide to medium focal length lenses go. That said, if you're someone that likes to shoot handheld and typically prefers to go with a slightly heavier setup, this is a lens you're definitely going to want to use either with a monopod, a tripod, or you'll certainly want to make sure you have your handheld technique down when shooting with this. Certainly something that a higher shutter speed can solve, and yes, when it comes to shooting with either a monopod or handheld, I do have videos on both of these topics that I will leave a link to above and in the description below that you can check out. Also, of course, being a manual focus lens, something like the TT Artisan 25mm is going to probably test your ability to do accurate manual focusing. Yes, you can get by with these small LCD screens or viewfinder on these Sonys if you know what you're doing and utilize techniques like focus peaking. And I do have a video around different manual focusing techniques that talks about focus peaking that I will link to that you can check out as well. All in all though, shooting with this lens was truly a joy. It is rare that I get to go out and have a just very connected shooting experience where it's just sort of me and the camera and I can really focus on composing shots. I do feel like there's something about a manual focus lens that lets you feel a bit more connected to your camera and the shots that you're getting. That might be part myth to a certain extent, but I really found myself enjoying my time at shooting with this lens and also, of course, very pleased with the different looks and images I was getting out of it, as you can now see with some of these shots I got on my a7R5. Now, just to talk about different things I noticed around the lens's image quality, I will say that this is a very sharp lens overall. You can see here at f2 in the center, we have a very sharp looking image, as you can see, at least as far as this goes in terms of manual focus so that is subject to my own ability to focus the lens. That said, you will notice at the corners, especially more wide open, you will not have that same sharpness. As we move to f2.8 and get a little bit more closed in terms of aperture values, we retain the same sharpness here at the center of the lens, and we can start to see at least parts of that corner starting to come more into focus. Of course, we do have a bit of barrel distortion here, which is not unexpected for any wider angle type of lens. Though as we go through the different apertures here, that's at f2, f2.8, f4, f5.6, especially once we get to f8, and certainly once we get to f16, we start to have a very sharp image throughout the lens. Overall, for your subject and whatever is in focus at whatever aperture you're using, I would expect this to be a fairly sharp lens. Now, this lens does exhibit a bit of focus breathing. Again, I would say nothing unexpected for this type of lens and its price point, but just something to keep in mind. Also, this lens does render bokeh very, very nicely. Certainly spherical and round when it comes to the centers. A bit of an ovular cat's eye shape once you get to the corners and sides of the lens, but again, certainly nothing unexpected for 
for the lens's price point, which yes, we should probably talk about this lens's price. So this lens currently retails for around $65 US, and honestly I've seen it for as low as around $50 to $55 US depending on if a sale was going on or what retailer was selling it. Truth be told, regardless of which of those prices you find this lens at, it is probably a steal, and that is something we should talk about with this lens, which overall, what is my take on the TT Artisan 25mm. As I mentioned at the start of this video, this lens has the distinction of being the smallest and most affordable lens I have ever used on any camera system, hands down. I honestly didn't know what to expect of this lens, but I really think it is a gem in the Sony E-mount system. If you're looking for a wide to medium focal length APS-C lens that doesn't break the bank, is small and compact, and you don't mind the fact that it is manual focus, or perhaps maybe even prefer that, it is truly hard to ignore the value that TT Artisan have put into this thing. I'm actually truly impressed with the quality of this thing, both in its build and overall image quality. And to me, this is one of those lenses that gives you a connected shooting experience and maybe a more unique way of getting a sort of quasi vintage look out of your modern Sony E-mount camera. So that is my take on the TT Artisan 25mm f2 lens. Hopefully this video has been of some help to you. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if it has. Feel free to check out my many other lens related videos on this channel and definitely be on the lookout because there will be more on the way. For now, that is all I have to say. So thanks for watching.